There is no one else like you. There is no one else for you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no As the continuous playing. <laughs> Good morning. I just want to acknowledge and give thanks. Amazing gratitude in both our hearts and our entire family's heart, including Jojo. We were so beautifully honored and recognized this past Sunday on Pastor's Appreciation Day. And uh, if I begin to name all the people that I'm grateful for, I, I know I will get in trouble because I'll miss somebody, but I am grateful for all the ones who were there and the ones who were watching on Facebook or YouTube and even those who weren't there. But uh, you're very significant and meaningful in our lives and in my family's life. I thank you especially for our friends who are our Facebook family, our YouTube family. Yeah, you, you may be members of other churches, but you join us uh, as often as you can. And uh, in the last two years, we, we, we bonded. And, and so I, I just consider you all the family of God. I started out with the song, You Deserve the Glory. The fact of the matter is that I am as undeserving, uh, undeserving of any honor here on earth. Uh, I'm a sinner saved by grace and by the Lord's mercies. Uh, I finally got it together in such a way that I've been able to serve. It's been over 44, 45 years since I gave my life to Christ and it made all the difference in the world. I was 19 years old when I had that supernatural encounter with, with God and my conscience and uh, it might have been one or two o'clock in the morning and it was uh, late fall or early winter. Uh, I think it was early December or late November. But at any rate, um, I had been ministered to by a friend and, and by Andre Crouch at a concert in Brooklyn. And by the time I got home, I, I couldn't resist anymore. And I, I said to the Lord that I, that I had done my own thing for 19 years and, and I wanted to give him at least 19 years to reverse it. Well, uh, he did more than that. In that one year, he... He absolutely changed my life dramatically and uh, my first love was music and and I even gave up the guitar and music for him and uh, he never asked me to give it up but uh, I had to make room for him to be number one in my life and at that time I was playing with a with a band called the resurrection band with my cousin Hiram and 19 years passed, and he still wasn't done with me, but I wasn't going back. And then another 19 years came and went. And whatever the remainder is, I'm not good at math. But uh, I'm in love with Jesus more today than, than that day when I was only 19. And so I thank my church, Circle of Christ Church, 
I thank all the churches that gave me an opportunity to minister through the years. Love Gospel Assembly, La Iglesia Cristiana de Damasco, my first church, church I was born and raised in. Much, much good came through those early years. And then John 3.16, what an awesome place. Woo! And then Love Gospel Assembly, the place where I was ordained and became the dean of a Bible college. I was given the opportunity to form a college in the Bronx, a satellite college campus. And I saw people that today hold doctorates and missionaries. Hallelujah. Like our very own Valerie Rivera in Peru. She was in those classes. Amen. And, um, and so today I, I thank God. I thank God for Elder Jay who helped me um, form the church with Pastor Raul and their wives and their families. Yeah. Alizé was just a little girl in children's church. And she brought Amy along. And then a dear old friend. Well, she's not old, but she's a friend from long ago. Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. And the Rodriguez family, who've been psh, just plain family. Amen. <laughs> awesome. They were all there, including little Vic and his wife. What a joy to see them. And of course, Papa. Papa. Jose Rosario. Dios te bendiga, mi amado. And so I, I celebrate uh, along with uh, Pastor Raul and Pastor Rick and Pastor Rafael and Pastor Jean and Pastor Lina and Pastor Lewis. Whew. Man, so many. Thank you to the children's department. Operation Grace, you killed it, man. <laughs> you had us. I almost fell off my seat. It's awesome. And uh, of course, faith. What a beautiful thing it was to see the birth of a, a beautiful ministry. And, and then our missions department. Wow, to have our lovely missionaries, Mina and Rebecca. God bless them. Bless the hearts. And Alfonso Wyatt. It's coming back November 21st. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful gifts. So many people. Oh gosh. And the gifts were beautiful. This is one of them. I think this is uh, Mitch and Judy. They gave me two. I think they did. <laughs> they got two crazy. And my daughter loves to open gifts. And then I couldn't tell who gave me what. But. Thank you to all, and of course the church, the elders, the board, for your generosity and your kindness. All of the pastors who consider ourselves privileged to serve you. But we serve the Lord first, and he deserves the glory. You deserve the glory. And the
nadie como tú Mereces toda gloria Y la honra No hay nadie No hay nadie como tú Aleluya, aleluya, aleluya Praise the Lord, Amen le tengo que dar gracias al hermano Reinaldo también, que, que hemos trabajado juntos por muchos años, eh, antes de que él se hiciera miembro de la congregación nuestra en Círculo de Cristo. El hermano Reinaldo y yo pues compartíamos estudios bíblicos en los hogares, especialmente en el hogar de Dori. Y estoy súper, súper agradecido por él y su esposa Arlene, que son miembros fieles y, y contribuyen tanto. Eh, ustedes no saben, no saben la, las, los años que cada, cada jueves o martes nos reuníamos. Y, y todavía nos reunimos porque hasta hace poco él estaba viniendo a la iglesia en medio de la pandemia, este dando estudios bíblicos y, y gracias a Dios que el Señor nos ha enviado otros siervos y, y Él está atendiendo su nieta y, y su familia y claro, también Él está recuperando de un accidente y le doy gracias a Dios que el Señor lo preservó y pido al Señor que le dé fuerzas y sanidad al Pastor Raúl que tanto lo extraño le escribí los otros días que me hace falta sus oraciones. Él cada vez que oraba por mí, pues es mía. Y después terminaba con un beso. Lo amo mucho. Y le doy gracias a Dios por su sanidad. Y estoy loco porque regrese. <ríe> La verdad que... Pero le doy gracias a Dios por Pastor Jean y Pastor Alina y Pastor Rafael. Y, y todos los que trabajan, nuestra hermana Sasha, ay Dios la bendiga, ya, ya resultó que el neurólogo ya le dieron el diagnóstico que, que pensaban que era, pues ya lo confirmaron y ahora están dándole este, medicamentos que son más este, dirigidos a sus síntomas y estamos confiados en Dios de que ya ella no va a perder su vista y el Señor la va a ayudar. Este, y no solamente ayudar, sino sanar en el nombre de Jesús. So, um, I thank the Lord. And um, this week was, was um, heavy, was beautiful. I did so many things. Of course, the uh, Rosario family, uh, Maria Centeno and Isaiah, who are faithful members. And their family is like family to us. They gave us Jojo. They gave us one of the best gifts. And you know what was so beautiful? We all got gifts, and then we also, somebody, somebody gave a gift to Jojo. That was, and it was weird because my kids were saying, the one who deserves the most gift in this house didn't get anything. How could they forget Jojo? <laughs> my kids are weird, you know. But that, it's, 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 it's a tribute to how, how much this, this wonderful little animal that God created has brought so much joy to our family and um, I have Maria to thank for that so Maria God bless you thank you she's there oh look at that God bless you Maria I love you so much and Camry of course and and Carson who gave up his little dog and um, and of course all all of her children the the Isaiah was weeping the other night and wrote to me he says how come it hurts so bad and I said well not only that, that he died, but what he represents has taken a hit and it doesn't die, but um, it's yet to be fulfilled in his life. You know, one of the great things that God does for us is that we are children, but we become parents. And when we become parents, we appreciate our parents so much more. And I came to an understanding about my dad, uh, you know, post-marriage, uh, that elevated him to the highest heights. It was, you know, I, 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 
I have six kids, and that's not even half of what he had. And uh, I, I can't, I can't. <laughs> if I didn't have best, I couldn't do it. It's just too much. But um, he, he was, oh gosh, well, it's not Father's Day. But um, what I was trying to communicate to Isaiah was that uh, when your parents die and uh, you haven't had that transition to, you know, hold your child and, and he went through a heartbreak, I know. Um, you know, like when Rosita was born, I looked up to him and I went, went up and I said, Papi, I got a girl because he told me, you're not you're not done until you have a daughter, because <laughs> daughters will end up taking care of. And uh, I had had three boys, and and I said, oh gosh, I mean, I love my boys, but I wanted a daughter so bad, and and God gave me that. Not only gave it, they gave me a double portion, and I mean a double portion, because they are both so amazing. And my dad, as usual, he was always right. Never thought he was right, but he was he was. He was right. And uh, I just thank God. I just thank God for Circle of Christ Church. I thank God for all of the deacons and deaconesses, the, the pastors and ministers that have passed by. The other day I received a beautiful letter from Apostle Isaiah Lewis. Just, a, just it, it made me cry. And he, he took his time and he wrote, he wrote a long letter. You know, we go back so many years when he came to me, he came to me hurting and I told him that I didn't have space, you know, for him, but that he could stay here and, and heal and participate, and he did, and he preached many times, and he taught, and he ministered in song, and he was part of our worship team. For a very important time, we were restructuring, and he was there, and he helped me a lot, and just his presence there. And of course, Pastor Vicki, and God's blessed them. They were able to close and I've been, I've been knowing this for quite some time, but they asked me, well, she asked me not to, to share it because they hadn't closed yet, you know. And, they, and so I was praying that they would be able to close. They, they are relocating to Hampton, Virginia, which is a big, big change from the, the Eden Wall project. So, you know, they, they suffered so much there. And uh, God blessed them, you know, God blessed them with a beautiful home. Gosh, it's gorgeous. And uh, so they're relocating to, uh, to Virginia, and that's a state that I visit often. So uh, get that kitchen ready. <laughs> I want some fried chicken. Anyway, uh, anything Karen Vicky makes is wonderful. She's a tremendous cook. Anyway, I'm so happy, especially for uh, Christina and... Uh, You know, it, it, it hurts to see the pain that they went through, especially with girls and, and uh, to see the Lord reward them. It, it's a blessing to me. Yeah, it's a blessing to me. After what they went through with Anthony and, and the baby, it's, it's hard. It's hard. But... Um, and of course, my beautiful, sweet Charlotte. Oh gosh. Oh, I'm getting sentimental here, so I'm not gonna teach on the good and beautiful life. I, I wanted to share this time with just share gratitude for the amazing, and, and this is every year, uh, you know, it just seems like every year you guys top it, and I'm almost embarrassed sometimes, but then when you make me laugh, I love it, and I had so much fun, you know, it's so much fun seeing people imitate me, make fun of me, <laughs> I just love it, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, you're not well, <laughs> if you're oversensitive and you can't handle a little joking, you know, about your hair and how you look, hey, listen, <laughs> If at this age I can't get over myself, I need Jesus. <laughs> but I got Jesus. I got Jesus on the main line. Amen. So anyway, uh, thank you, Circle Crest Church. Thank you, the leadership, the elders, Elder Larry and Elder Jay and Pastor Raul and uh, Elder Nancy and uh, Garucha, 
who's part of our bookkeeping team and the treasury team, Doris Bowman and the deaconesses, Eileen and, and Dory and Lillian and oh gosh, and, and the faith team, Gary. I mean, Gary's, I was ready to, I was ready to, I was afraid that my nose would start running from the sentiment that I felt in my soul while Gary was reliving and to see, you know, how fast time goes and yet so many things happen in Gary's life and, and I'm so honored to be a part of this, you know, and uh, I'm looking forward to the month of uh, January. We're going to be doing either January or the beginning of February. We're going to be doing uh, credentials and going to license preachers and put in pastors and elders and deacons. So pray for me that God will guide me and uh, we'll have a great celebration, I, I hope. And I thank God for that. So thank you. Um, and let me say hello to those who are on the air. Uh, Bilma, oh wow, I'm gonna miss you, Bilma. Thank you, Bilma and, uh, worked with me and William for the last week we were working so hard. And of course, I didn't work that hard. Neither did William, it was really Bilma. She's a missionary and she's gonna be heading down to the south. She doesn't like the winters here anymore. And I'm gonna miss you, Bilma, cause she makes me laugh. This girl is so funny, God, she's amazing. But um, she did some missionary work. We we helped one of our members get out of a severe crisis. I, I you know I thought that it might die and 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 we would lose him. But um, she didn't give up. And let me tell you, there was plenty of reason for her to give up. I, uh, when I was younger, when I was her age, I did that, and I know how much it exhausts you. But I'm not that age anymore. I ain't doing that no. I ain't got time for that. I got more. I got more on my plate than I can handle. So um, thank you, Bilma, for your amazing love. And Esther says to take her with you. <laughs> That's because her sister is in Florida. So she, she'll stay half a day with you and she'll jump right down to Florida. <laughs> and uh, we got to pray for her niece who's very ill. And they couldn't make their flight yesterday. They had to change their flight because uh, her niece and my daughter's best friend, the prima hermana, Jaripet, is in a, in a bad way physically. I don't know what's going on with her. I hope it's not meningitis or anything like that, but it seems to be something that has weakened her body terribly, and she fell and uh, was out of it. I think she had a concussion, so we'll pray for her. Uh, Gloria Nazario, oh, how I miss you, Gloria. God bless you, Gloria. What a blessing to see your name blesses me. And Olga, God bless you. And Anna Reyes, yes, good morning. Ashley McDougall, wow, okay, God bless you too and your family. And uh, Sylvia, hi Sylvia, hallelujah. And um, Jennifer, uh, <sighs> Sylvia's asking Bobby to forgive. Uh, I, you know, that's automatic. <laughs> See, you're not the only snarky one. <laughs> okay, God bless you, Jennifer Cave. Uh, you stumbled upon our account by error. That's not an error. <laughs> or oh, at the onset of COVID. But in hindsight, it was probably ordered by God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. I know it was ordered by God. And my brother's on. I hadn't seen you on in a long time, Jorge David. I was going to send you a map on how to get on Facebook because I missed you, brother. Uh, I, I figured you'd be on, but apparently your name wasn't showing up. So God bless you. And that's my precious 84-year-old, you know. Colin Powell was 84. Ooh, God bless him and his family. May the Lord sustain his wife, Alma, and uh, his family. You know, he, he was fully vaccinated, but he had cancer and Parkinson's. And uh, so his immune system was, you know, so it's, it's, and he said not to feel sorry for him. So that's a real warrior, tremendous man. I, I really, really appreciated Colin Powell. I know uh, we didn't always agree in everything politically, but 
he was from the Bronx, and you know, when you're from the Bronx, you're boogie down, and if you're boogie down, you're family to me. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, this is my Bronx shirt too. I think I think it was Mitch I, and Judy. What does it say? You want to read it for me? You want to read? Say hello. Say good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, see if you can read because I can't read backwards. Because hardcore. Yeah, hardcore devil stomping. Ninja <laughs> isn't an official. <laughs> isn't an official job title, Pastor. Uh, this is so much fun. I, you know, I I cannot do church without a sense of humor. We we have to laugh. We have to laugh. So thank you all, and and God bless you all. And Liz is there. Oh wow, Maria. I Esther told me you were on, but I didn't see you on. Maria, you were a champ, and I'm sorry I missed your, your testimony. I'm, I got lost, and I got to the funeral a little late, and I missed her and Isaiah's thing. And, but I got there on time to do a service, and we preached the gospel. That's the important thing, and we sang and ministered. Anyway, um, Uba, hi, Uba. God bless you. Yes, I miss, I miss you all, too. Praise the Lord. So if there's anybody that I didn't know. Okay, Pastor Gail Alvarez. Uh, oh, Pastor Gail's there? Oh, that's sweet. Thank you, Pastor Gail. And Elisita. Eh? Elisita Santos. Elisita? Oh, oh, Elisita, my favorite crossing guard. My favorite. She is a joy. When I come down Round Bots, Round Boats Avenue and I make that turn in Co-op City Boulevard, there she is, joyful. Hi, Pastor. <laughs> I want to just stop and chat. That's Justin's mom and and Lily Ocasio's daughter. What a joy, Elisita. Oh, man. I'm glad you have time. I guess she's out there in the, in the corner with her phone. Praise God. Yeah. Gail, please tell Pastor Jason I love him. Ah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm going to do two more worship songs, and I'll do a short devotional today. I, I just want to spend time just... Thanking you, thanking you all for so much love. And through the years, you know, I, I really feel loved. That I'm, I'm sincerely saying that. And I have always felt loved by our congregation. I've always felt loved by our congregation. It's amazing because we came out of rejection. Uh, the pastor that we were helping, and I was just doing an English service for him, um, he didn't treat us well, and he actually booted us out. Uh, so I know the feeling. <laughs> uh, he really booted them out because I was there because he invited me to start something in English and, and he could get somebody else. I told him get somebody else and I had places to go, you know. And uh, But I couldn't leave that crew. I couldn't leave that crew. I couldn't leave Jay out there, Pastor Raul. I couldn't leave them. They had been my Aaron and my her through the years. And I couldn't leave those kids. We baptized 20 in Orchard Beach. They had been in church all their lives and they hadn't been baptized. I don't know what was going on. But when I got there, we made such a difference. And we got in trouble because we gave so much to the missions. That was his complaint that too much money was going to missions. He didn't give us heat, but we gave to missions. <laughs> yeah, on the days we had service, we had no heat. <laughs> I'm not complaining, I really not. I'm laughing. But uh, I'm laughing because that man, before he died, he called for me and I went and I prayed for him and I hugged him and I said, listen, go, 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 go with God. He says, no, I want to fight. They took my church away. You kick people out, you get your church taken. You know, it, it, that's you reap what you sow. Oh, shut up, Sam. <laughs> uh, lesson in life. Lesson in life. Uh, there are principles that work all the time. Anyway, in the key of D? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I worship you with all of me, my heart, my life. Give you everything I'll 
pay the price Such a small sacrifice To worship you With all of me I worship you With all of me My heart I'll pay the price Such a small sacrifice To worship you With all of me And I'll give you every part of me Each song I sing, each breath I breathe soul. Take my life and take control. I'll give you every part of me. Each song I sing, each breath I breathe. I'll give to you my heart and soul. Take my life and take control. I worship you with all of me. My heart give you everything I'll pay the price such a small sacrifice to worship you with all of me and I give you every part of me each song I sing each breath I breathe I give to you my heart and soul Take my life and take control I give you every part of me Every pain I have, every loss I have I give you to you my heart and soul Take my life and take control I give you every part of me Each song I sing, each breath I breathe I give to you my heart and soul Take my life and take control I worship you All of me My heart, my life I give you everything I'll pay the price Such a small sacrifice To worship you And of course, Sasha, thank God they let Sasha sing, man. I was so happy. And she sang one of my favorites, so I got to sing that favorite one again because she brought it back to me. Uh, para el pueblo hispano, nuestra gente latina, con el sabor arrecao. <laughs> Vamos escalando perdón. Vamos llevando la cruz Sigamos el camino angosto Que con Cristo es mucho mejor Vamos escalando perdaños Vamos llevando la cruz Sigamos el camino angosto Que con Cristo es mucho mejor Ya viene la recompensa Ya no voy a llorar Tengo a Cristo en mi vida Por eso puedo escalar Ya viene la recompensa Yo no voy a llorar Tengo a Cristo en mi vida Por eso voy a escalar 
A veces me siento débil Ya no puedo escalar Alzo mis manos al cielo Cristo fuerzas me da A veces me siento débil Ya no puedo escalar Alzo mis manos al cielo Viene Cristo y fuerzas me da Ya viene la recompensa Ya no voy a llorar Tengo a Cristo en mi vida Por eso puedo escalar Ya viene la recompensa Ya no voy a llorar ja, ja. Tengo a Cristo en mi vida por eso puedo escalar Que con Cristo es mucho mejor Vamos escalando perdaños Vamos llevando la cruz Sigamos el camino angosto Que con Cristo es mucho mejor Ya viene la recompensa Tengo a Dios, no voy a llorar Tengo a Cristo en mi vida por eso puedo escalar Ya viene la recompensa Ya no voy a llorar Tengo a Cristo en mi vida Por eso puedo escalar eh, Ya viene la recompensa Aleluya Ya no voy a llorar Porque tengo a Cristo en mi vida por eso puedo escalar. Oh. You can do a step on this. Nobody beats the Latinos worshiping. I can hear Guido and Maraca timbales, conga. Y la flauta. Alaba a Cristo vive. La, la, y a su nombre gloria. Y a su nombre gloria. Y a su nombre gloria. A veces me siento débil. Ya no puedo escalar. Pero alzo mis manos al cielo. Cristo fuerzas me da. A veces me siento débil, ya no puedo escalar, alzo mis manos al cielo y Cristo fuerzas me da, ya viene la recompensa, ya no voy a llorar, tengo a Cristo en mi vida, no puedo dejar. Viene la recompensa, ya no voy a llorar, porque tengo a Cristo en mi vida y ahora puedo, sí, ahora puedo escalar. Ah, 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 ah. A 
alaba lo que él vive Si no hubiera sido por el Señor Hubiera sido por el Señor Mi alma se hubiera perdido Si no hubiera sido por el Señor Oh, mi alma se hubiera perdido Si no hubiera sido por el Señor Si no hubiera sido por el Señor si no hubiera sido por el Señor, mi alma se hubiera perdido. Si no hubiera sido por el Señor, mi alma se hubiera perdido. Si no hubiera sido por el Señor, si no hubiera sido por el Señor, si no hubiera sido por el Señor, mi alma se hubiera perdido. Si no hubiera sido por el fuego, mi alma se hubiera perdido. Si no hubiera sido por el Señor, She loved that. Hallelujah. Liz Torres. Oh, one of my wonderful sisters. God used Liz Torres one time. We were in, we were in just in the beginning of that, <laughs> of that uh, pandemic, and oh, I had been exposed. So I was. I, I, they said to to do two weeks. So I said I'm going to do 18 days, four more days than what they say, because I don't want to give this thing to anybody. And I didn't have it, but I didn't know if I had it or not, because. I had done a funeral the day before the lockdown in New Jersey, and and people all broke out there. With, my cousin almost died, and her husband. They were almost two months trying to recover. And uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. So anyway, I say all that just to say thank you to Liz and her sister Karen, because. Um, we had a, you know, everything broke down. We didn't know how we were going to have church. And I didn't have this set up. I, I started with just <laughs> that laptop and no mics and a guitar, acoustic guitar downstairs in the basement, very far from, I didn't know what I was doing. I still don't know what I'm doing half the time, but I was very far from the router and the modem. And, and I just every day, three times a day, every day, three times a day, every day, three times a day, because uh, I had nothing else to do but just wait until this, and we're still in it. And uh, and I missed my people, and I was struggling and, and you know, learning what I had to do uh, so I could get some uh, young folks in the youth, uh, and thank God for our youth, uh, and, and our brother, Mark, because, you know, he got, he, he was afflicted with the COVID. I mean, three or four times over, he lost two brothers back to back and then he got it and uh, and then he was hospitalized for uh, a diabetes that he didn't know we almost lost Mark two or three times and it, you know we, we struggled and in all of that um, our washing machine broke down and then um, Esther needed four new tires on her van and um, we 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 had our, you know, emergency money for just, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. And they were saying this could last, you know, two or three years. And so far they've been more or less right. And uh, Liz didn't know that. And she sent us a beautiful gift that covered all of that. It was just amazing, her and her sister. So um, she didn't ask me to say that. And, and you know. I, I, I just, you know, I'm so grateful. And, and they're from the body of Christ, but they're from another church. 
And, you know, in a way, we sewed it right back. There was a there was a sister from their church who lost her husband and her son. Uh, she was visiting her son, who died, I think, of COVID. And then when she got back home, her husband was dead of a heart attack. And so she had a double funeral. And you guys out there, you raised enough money. We gave her uh, money to cover the double funeral. So, you know, this is, this is just, you know, you reap what you sow, you sow generously, you reap generously. And and the, the beauty of seeing your names on there. Hey, Mama Jean. Oh, that's a special woman. We'll pray for Mama Jean. She needs some special strength. She has not been feeling well. She needs more strength in her body. And, uh, uh, you know, I know about that, you know. Uh, may the Lord continue to strengthen her. And Sandy, oh gosh, Sandy's a walking miracle. She has a uh, aneurysm in her brain, and it's inoperable, and has had it. But as long as I know her, she's she had it longer than that. And yet she's on. She lives somewhere out here in Connecticut, and she stays on. God bless you, and Pepe. God bless you. God bless you so much. And of course, Edith. Oh, what can I say about Edith? Edith adopted my family. All of my kids and my grandkids get birthday gifts she remembers you know she's like my mom she, my mom would remember all of these birthdays and make sure that somebody got a card even if nothing was in it you know it's just and uh edith was it is just like that and and her cards have <laughs> plenty in it and god bless you edith thank you for your kindness and all of you all of you uh I, you know i that's the horrible thing about mentioning somebody because then you have to mention somebody else and I can't. I got to. I got to at least give you a word of encouragement today. So let's 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 get to work. Let's let's see if we could do this. Let's see if we could do this. Yeah. Hi, Ronnie. Wow. Good to see you, Ronnie. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. Let's see if we could do this. Yeah, we could do it. Yes. All right. A little different background there. Yeah. My wife is scolding Jojo for snoring. She's she's not snoring. She's speaking in tongues. That's that's how she speaks in tongues. <laughs> you don't understand dogs. <laughs> she gets slain as soon as I start talking. <laughs> anyway, I, I wanted to, you know, we've been talking about the Beatitudes, and we finished the Beatitudes, and this is not part of the book, The Good and Beautiful Life. But we fi we're finding out that the good and beautiful life centers around the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount, is the manifesto of God's kingdom. And this is the way life is going to be. The people who are rejected are going to be accepted. The people who are outcast and marginalized will be the invited special guest in the kingdom. And uh, it's, it's an upside-down kingdom. Really, it's a right side up. The world is upside down. And he blesses the poor in spirit. He blesses the meek. He blesses those who get slapped and beat up. And you, know, you don't understand it. You have to explain this. And we explained it, that, that, that the blessing was that the king was including them in his rescue mission and they would be the first ones to to recognize the messiah and they accompanied him right down on palm sunday and uh, but he 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 had to explain to them that he had to die first and that was something that was very hard for them to understand and even his closest disciples didn't understand that um, we had to be right with god first if we're not right with god what is it profit a man if he should gain the whole world if he had all the gold if he had all the silver if he had all the material gains of the world all the fame all the popularity and yet lose his soul so th there's nothing more valuable than a soul it costs god the blood of his son and so there's nothing more valuable than a soul god created us in his image and he's rescuing us from the devil's stronghold and uh, so that's the first part of his mission, and he will finish his mission with his second coming and with his judgment. And there's a, there's a verse of scripture that I want to bless you with. It's from Zephaniah. So you don't, we don't really usually read Zephaniah. He's, he's part of that collection of the, of the, um, you know, the, 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 um, the prophets, the prophets, uh, the Jewish uh, canon is divided between the law, the prophets, and the writings. And so those are the three divisions and, and, um, in the Jewish canon. 
And we inherited that. That's part, well, that's what we call the Old Testament. And some, you know, theologians have, uh, you know, delegated to this group of 12 prophets and they call them the minor prophets. And it's, they're not minor because they're less important. No, it's, it's a poor choice of words. They were, their message were, it was just as major as the major prophets, but they wrote shorter. And Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, they wrote these long, this, these long prophecies for, that took, you know, 60 chapters. And, and so these were the most, you know, 12 by uh, Hosea. And, and, and some were on one chapter, like Nahum and Zephaniah, uh, four. And so in chapter four, yeah, how do you like that? I'm, tired, I'm sorry, not chapter four. Chapter three, verse 17. And look at that. Isn't that nice? You know what? I'm going to take my ugly face out of here. And uh, and just put that. There you go. Doesn't that look nice? Look at that. The Lord your God is in your midst. Doesn't that sound like the seventh of Repent, for the kingdom is near you, is in your midst, right? The Lord your God is in your midst. He's near you. A mighty one who will save. Hallelujah. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. I don't know if you've ever read this verse before. But this is, this is an amazing verse because it says that God sings over his people. That has to be the greatest voice ever to sing. I mean, forget about American Idol and all that singing competition. Nobody. Because when we get into this verse, you'll see why. And, and, um, and, and I'm going to try to do it very quickly, but it deserves, it, it deserves at least 10 to 15 minutes, but I don't have that. So anyway, uh, but this is, this is the favor of God. And I want to share with you, you were so kind to me. And all of you, even those of you who are members of other churches and far away, have always been kind to me. Gail Alvarez, Liz, uh, uh, Bobby, uh, um, Sylvia. These are these are people who have contributed to to our mission and our vision. And and they didn't have to, but they did. They and we loved them, and they loved us. And and what a beautiful thing! This is the way the kingdom of God is supposed to be. None of these barriers of individual local churches. It's all one body. One faith, one baptism, one Lord, one God. Anyway, the Lord your God is in your midst. A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt. That means he will get really happy. Right? Over you. But he's really happy over you. Did you hear that? God is really happy over you. And he, and he shows it with loud singing. I mean, God is... God's not nervous, you know, he's not, a mighty fort, and that's a beautiful hymn too, uh, written by Martin Luther, a mighty fortress is our God, no, he's like, he's Latino, <laughs> he got the little mambo going, he, he. Yeah, and so he'll exalt over you with loud singing. Can you imagine that? Can you close your eyes just a second and think of God singing over you? Ah, I mean the voice of the Lord. The voice of the Lord shakes the earth. It causes a trembling. I mean his voice will cause your body to tremble. And it's with joy. That's an important distinction. So uh, let me just tell you this, okay, real quickly. This is one of the sad books of the Bible. This, this is a, a book of two faces. That it really is. And, you know, when, when, whenever I teach on a verse, I always give you the context because you, you, the first responsibility of any preacher or teacher is to take the, the verse and explain it the way the hearers heard it and the way the author intended it. You can make applications later, but first you do an explanation. of the con- And the context is God is so angry with his people. Um, he's exiled them. He's he's saying he's going to judge them and destroy them, and and he's speaking to Judah, the 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 tribe, the lead tribe, 
the praise tribe, the kingdom tribe. Uh, Judah means praise, right? And uh, it's the lead tribe in battle. It's the one who leads them in battle. Yeah, the lion of the tribe of Judah is the Messiah. That's Jesus. Yeah? And David comes from that tribe, the, the star of Israel. And so he's telling them, I'm going to cut you out. And that's it. And, and so you say, wow, this is such a beautiful verse that's hidden. It's a beautiful gem. This is what you call a diamond in the rough. You know, you, you, you got to really look well and then you see something bright shining in this, this awesome and dark prophecy. But God is angry at sin and he and he's going to, and he's going to respond to the condition of the world who, which he created for his glory. He created perfectly for his glory and 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 we humankind betrayed him and gave this beautiful creation over to the devil to the hands of the enemy and that's why so much evil is in this world there's so much evil in this world because the this world has been given over but he's bringing it back he's taking it back and you see that in the book of romans chapter 8 where where even creation is uh, grumbling and it's shaking and it's weeping and it's howling and it's and the shaking and this uh, climate change and hurricanes and floods and earthquakes and all of these are signs of the end and and they're increasing increasing in great manner and here we are almost november and we still have summer outside today was the coolest day I, we've had so far in the fall and and you see you know, things are going wacky, you know, somebody is getting warmer, some people say, no, it's getting colder, I don't know what it is, but something's not right, but you know what, it's just a sign, it's just a sign, and, and he says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save, and, and he, what he's saying is, I'm going to save people out of this mess, and he's really the theme, the theme of this particular prophecy is the day of the Lord. And you'll see that in verse 7. Chapter 1, verse 7. Chapter 1, verse 7. If you, if you have your Bibles open, then you can look it up. But in chapter 1, verse 7, he get, that's the key verse for the prophecy of Zephaniah, the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord has two faces. There's two sides to the day of the Lord. The people who are not right with God. The people who are not right with God, they have to tremble because he's going to judge them and punish them. The people who are right with God are going to be favored and they're going to have the Lord save them. And they're going to have the Lord deliver them. And then the Lord's going to throw a party. He's going to sing for them. And this is what this verse is. This is the part, this is the good part, the good part where he establishes his kingdom forever and ever. There'll be no dying there. There'll be no crying there. There'll be no sickness there. There'll be no devil there. And, and, and there'll not be a need for the sun for the radiant, outshining, bright shining of the son of God will give light to all and we will be forever with him and never to be separated and we shall enjoy him forever because in his presence there's fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. Oh, hallelujah. And so the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. Not only that, but check this out. That speaks of the imminence of God. And that's a theological word, and, you know, every so often because I'm teaching theology for some leaders. And, and, and imminence is part of his attributes. And, and the imminence of God means defini a, a simple definition of the imminence of God is that God is near to all people. But he's near to all people to favor them. That's the imminence of God is that because when God gets near sinners, sinners have to tremble. But when God gets near to his people who have repented and have received the Lord Jesus as their Savior, he blesses them. So the imminence of God is the favor of God that comes near. Now, that's an amazing thing because God does not come near to sin. He repels sin. So he has to answer that. He has to, he has to resolve that conflict. And so he removes sin with the blood of the lamb. And, and that's why John said, Behold the lamb of God who taketh away, takes away the sin of the world. And the blood covers us and then God can come near us. And when God is near to you, he blesses you because that's part of his personhood 
He is a giving God, a generous God, a good God. We covered that with the first book, The Good and Beautiful God. And so the imminence of God, la imanencia, imanente, cerca para favorecerte. Wow. And, and God is near to us in order to favor us. Isn't that beautiful. And save there means to deliver and preserve us. So the day of the Lord is a day of judgment for those who are unrighteous. And they need to be scared. They're, they're, do, they're doomed. And, and But on the day of the Lord, the righteous shall be delivered and preserved from judgment. We are saved from the wrath of God, Paul says. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. And then the second line, the second line there, he will rejoice over you with gladness and he will quiet you by his love. That's, he will rejoice over you. So he, he's coming over us. That's a beautiful thing. Just think about God coming over you. And, and you know, and, and if you can breathe and still alive, you're your favorite because the, the holiness of God will kill you. It, it, it repels against sin. And so he will rejoice over you with gladness and he will quiet you by his love. This is an interesting choice of words. And I, obviously I'm not reading from the King James. This is from the, uh, the English Standard Version. And, and, and what it means is that God's joy is our strength, right? And our, in our worries and anxieties and he will surround us with his love. So the, the joy of God, not our joy, but God's joy, jo God will be so happy because we, he has redeemed us that he's having a party and he's ha 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 and he's rejoicing over us. Can you imagine this? Ah, ah, ah. He's shouting, I got you, I got you, Sam, I delivered you. And he's singing songs about, I delivered you, I delivered you, oh yes. And he's singing and, and, and that strength just cancels our anxieties. And actually the word there, quiet, means to hush. It, it, it silences any negativity. Woo! When the voice of God comes, all those damnable thoughts that give you all kinds of creepies, they, they get silenced by the volume of his joy. The volume of his joy cancels and deafens us from the negativity of our past. Hallelujah. And so God's joy is our strength and in our worries and in our, our anxieties, he will surround us with his love and his love is an everlasting love and and so what we see here is that when he rejoices over us it means literally the hebrew word means to display his joy upon us in other words god is showing off god's coming on you and says i got you man i got i got you covered come on get under me yeah quiet and quiet means that god will silence our worries oh i love this i love this and then i'm finished yeah, i'm finished the, the third line you know scripture you, you divide it into three points he will exalt over you with loud singing you know you can read in king james new king james means the same thing he will exalt and that word exalt is an interesting word in the hebrew it means more than just rejoicing it means rejoicing so loudly that it causes an earthquake <laughs> God will shake rejoicefully, rejoicingly. I, I made up a word. Rejoicingly is what I should have written, but I, I, I wanted to add fully. So I, I add a dash because if it's not a word, then you can add a dash and you can rejoice fully. In other words, when God rejoices fully, when he fully rejoices, the world shakes. <laughs> He's, this singing is so loud and it's so, it causes you to tremble. And that's what, and then with loud singing, with, with God will shout joyfully with singing over you. He will shout joyfully with singing over you. In other words, God's song, this is not a mellow, worshipful song. This is drums banging. This is drums banging and yeah, shaking. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, what you call what? Is, what do you? What do they say here? Because mm -hmm. a hardcore devil stomping ninja isn't an official <laughs> job title. <laughs> what is it, pastor? Uh, because uh, 
hardcore devil stomping. So, and and I remember the uh, what's his name, uh, Kirkland. Edwin. Huh? Edwin. No, not Edwin Kirkland. No, not not from our church. The singer. Oh. <laughs> the singer. Yeah, the composer. The stop. Stop. A great gospel song. I, uh, yeah, I, I, but right now his name escapes me. But he's very popular. Yeah. Uh, he's fantastic anyway but he wrote a song you know with his choirs because he really he really just composes and writes songs the choir sings um it's kirkland yeah his first name escapes me right now but anyway he called it the stomp and if you listen to that song wow i mean stomp stomp and and and, and you can just envision just stepping on the head of the devil what genesis three fifteen, he caused enmity between your seed and the woman's seed and you will you will hurt his heel you will wound his heel but he will stomp your head he will stomp your head <laughs> i love it he will stomp you in other words in the day of judgment God's going to stomp on the devil and he's going to dance on his head and he's going to shake so loud and he's going to sing over us a mighty song of triumphant victory. God will show punishment and praise. Ah, I, I messed up the order here. The theme of the prophet's message is simple. The day of the Lord, Zephaniah 1.7. And this approaching day shows two faces, one of judgment against those who rejected the grace of the Lord and one of blessing for those who follow the Lord. And God will show, I'm sorry, God will show punishment and praise. I went backwards. In the day of the Lord, God will show off his triumph over sin and we who follow the Lord will be his trophies. I love that. We who follow the Lord. So the Lord is, is shaking and the heavens are rejoicing. There's a big banquet. There's a big dance. And God is leading the choir. He didn't say, choir leader, get out of the way. David, sit down for a second. I got this. And God stands. And he shakes and he shouts and he sings over us a triumphant victory. In other words, devils see I redeem the children of Adam. They are here. They are my chosen people. And uh, I love it. God will shake joyfully over us with loud singing. With loud singing. Think about that for a while today. God favors you. Your life may not look like it's favored, but if you have Jesus and you know him, because some people know about him. But if you know Jesus, you have something to thank God for. I thank God for my church and the church that I serve. I thank God for my Lord and Savior. He's, he's everything to me. I thank God for my family, my parents who raised me. I thank God for my sisters and brothers, those who have gone ahead of me, those who remain. I love them. I thank God for all my nephews and nieces. Some of them are knuckleheads, but God loves them anyway. And uh, and I thank God. For, I, I saw a picture of my granddaughter today. Oh, my God, is she gorgeous? I'm, I'm biased, but no, it's not a bias. She is adorable. She looks like her mom. She don't look like grandpa. Thank God. And uh, I've been blessed. A wonderful wife, a beautiful wife. She drives me crazy, but I drive her more crazy. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I gotta get back here. No, I just, I, I left that slide there because that's better than me. <laughs> that's the word of God. <laughs> Thank you. She she keeps me uh, because I see myself there, and I'm I you know I make believe that I see you, but I but I I know that God God wants to encourage you today. God wants to encourage you today. You know, whether you're in Florida, New Jersey, New York, the Bronx, Brooklyn, wherever you're at, wherever you're at, God wants to bless you. He, you are the favorite of the Lord. And you say, but I don't, I don't, deserve, none of us deserve it. He covered us with the blood of his son. And the blood of Jesus is so powerful that it blinds the father from our sins. And all he sees is a reflection 
of his son's face for we shall be changed and we shall be conformed to the image of his beloved son I love that Romans 8 whom he called he sanctified whom he sanctified he, he chose he predestined he elected and why that we should be conformed to the image of his son when God is done with us will look like Jesus now I'm a father and I see my son that looks like me in victory I'm gonna sing over him and shout and shout in triumph I see my daughter my blood my, my, my bone of my bones flesh of my flesh my, my DNA and she's saved and she's serving the Lord, I'm gonna rejoice over her and I'm gonna sing over her. That's what God is doing. There's two faces. That's why we have to evangelize. That's why we have to share the good news. And as Jennifer Cave said, she just happened at the beginning of the COVID to come on to our account and see this. And now she realizes that it wasn't by chance. God was sending a word of encouragement that God was sending his love in the midst of death in the midst of sickness and losing jobs and and having difficulties and dealing with COVID and dealing with other stuff and so many people who, who canceled their their chemotherapies because they were afraid to get COVID and, and it got worse and, and so many negative things in the midst of the riots in the midst of violence in the midst of injustice in the midst of upheaval political upheaval church divisions Christians mad at Christians the day of the Lord the day of the Lord the day of the Lord is Matthew 25 and he separated the sheep from the goat the wheat from the tares he separated them and we the favorite ones will hear come into your rest my good and faithful servant the only title that I'll want on that day is not past he's the chief past all I want is servant come into your rest you are favored of God He's so happy about you that he's singing over you and it's causing an earthquake. Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you for joining us and I pray that this word will be a great encouragement to you. Yeah. Well, I gave my life to Christ and I gave my life to Christ and it made all the difference in the world. I gave my life to Christ. What is that? Gave my life to Christ, gave my life to Christ, and it made all the difference in the world. Oh, I gave my life to Christ, I gave my life to Christ, and it made all the difference in the world. You know he took my life so broken, and he put the pieces together again. And he took my sins and threw them in the deepest of the ocean And he said he'd be my closest friend That's why I gave my life to Christ Gave my life to Christ And it made all the difference in the world Won't you give your life to Christ? Give your life to Christ He can make all the difference in your world Oh, he can take your life's so broken He can put the pieces together again He can take your sins and throw them in the deepest of the ocean And he said he'd be your closest friend That's why I gave my life to Christ Gave my life to Christ And it made all the difference in the world Oh, gave my life to Christ Gave my life to Christ and it made all the difference in the world. Oh, I gave my life to Christ.
I gave my life to Christ And it made all the difference in the world I gave my life to Christ I gave my life to Christ And it made all the difference in the world Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus We present Jari Beth my wife's niece, Pastor Debbie's daughter, she's very ill right now. I pray, oh God, that you put your healing hand on her body. Cause whatever is afflicting her to go. Cancel it in the name of Jesus. I pray for Sophia, someone that my wife knows. She lost, she's a Honduran woman whose family is back in Honduras. She lost her daughter a couple of years ago, and last night she lost her son in a horrible car accident in Honduras. She's grieving. Lord, have mercy on Sophia. Pa. For Louis Lassen, member of our church who's not been feeling well, may the Lord put his hand on his body in Jesus' name. Petiti Dora's daughter, who's been battling COVID, for our brother Nelson, who lost his wife, strengthened him. For Ronnie's daughter, Shira, that she would have an encounter with Jesus Christ. For Liz Torres' friend, Nellie, in the name of Jesus, touch her father. For Susanna's cousin, young Jet, handsome young boy, his brain is filled with tumors that are cancerous. Lord, have mercy on him. Do a miracle in Jesus' name. He's beginning chemo. Father, let him not only conquer, but become stronger in Jesus' name. We thank you for the miracle that you did in Pastor Raul. Continue to strengthen him. Lord, for Esther Neal, Elder Larry's wife, who's not well, has had this infection and wound in her body that never heals. Father, we pray, oh God, you do a miracle on her behalf. For Maribel's grandson who has this viral infection in the name of Jesus. For Titi Nacita, I spoke to her the other day, Lord. She's so sweet. God bless her, Lord. Frank Guridi's aunt. For our sister Mildred Espinosa, Lord. Your healing power in her body. For our sister Evelyn Leboy, who's recovering and will begin chemo. Father, in the name of Jesus, strengthen her. For all those that are struggling with chemo and all those who are struggling with COVID. Lord, the ones that are, the petitions that are on the, the comments, and you know them all, I can't even read them, but you know them all, oh God. Father, I pray that you bring healing, deliverance, that we would be the favorite ones. We thank you, Lord, for this time. In the precious name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen and amen. Thank you for being with us. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And no matter what happens, forget about the rest. Remember that Jesus is the best. Have a wonderful day.